Welcome back to the channel. We meet a lot of folks when we travel and we like to give them a little something to remind them of our channel. Previously, we had small plastic coins that worked okay, but we've come up with something better. Late last year, I sold a very nice two-year-old Fuji camera for the same price that I paid for it new. New iPhone cameras have gotten very good, and as a grandpa taking photos of his grandsons, I realized that I never used my Fuji camera. Little boys just won't wait for Papa to go get the good camera. We use the proceeds from the camera to buy a new toy. It's an X-Tool M1 laser, and so far I'm having a lot of fun with it. Today I want to show you how to make this token. You'll need a photo you want to engrave and some three millimeter basswood, which you can find on Amazon. The sheets of wood cost about $1.50 each, and I get 30 tokens per sheet, so they cost about five cents each. Now that's not counting the cost of the laser though. So let's get started. The website that we're going to use is called imag-r.com and there's a number of things that you can do to an image. We're going to use the background removal tool and then some of these buttons down here. So first click on background removal and you'll see an upload button. Click that. Find the image that you want to use and you'll see it's working up here. It takes a few seconds for it to upload. Scroll down and here's the image before and after with the background removed. Now the next thing that I want to do is save that. So click download, note the, the, the file name. When it's completed, click on the home link again. Now we want to scroll down and use these tools down here. Go ahead and click upload. We want it to be grayscale because the laser printer etcher can only do grayscale. Click that and make sure that you have the image that you just downloaded. It'll say BG remove for background remove. Double click that and give it a few seconds. Scroll down and now we have a black and white image with the background removed. And the next thing we want to do is crop. Go down to the right corner, or any, go to any corner that you want to, but just click and drag to crop the image the way you want. And I know I want it somewhere right in here. I'll bring the top down a little bit and click crop. Wait a moment, scroll down, and now there's my cropped image. And this thing down here, we'll take care of that later. I'll show you how to take that out. The next thing we want to do is click Material. I like Old and Wood. Click OK. Give it a moment. Here's a before and after. Now this is still 14, 16 inches in size. That's way too big. And I like to do resize as a final step. They have it listed here as the third step, but I found that I get a much better image if I do it last. So I'm at the end of my process here on, on this website. So click resize, change it from pixels to inch. And I know that I want my width to be about two inches. Just click that and the height will adjust automatically. Dots per inch, we want 254. And the reason for that is the M1 X-Tool laser has 100 lines of resolution per centimeter. And there's 2.54 centimeters in an inch. If, if it doesn't make sense, just take my word for it, 254. Okay. And now all we have to do is download. Now download it as a PNG because that will create a transparent background and I'll show you what I mean by that in a moment but you want PNG so click PNG and note the file name now we have an image that we can use in our XTool software and this is what it looks like see these squares that means it's a transparent background and we will use the tool in the X tool software to get rid of this thing down on my shoulder down uh, down in there but anyway all right now we have an image that we can use in the X tool software 
Now we're in the XCS software, the XTool Creative Space, and I've loaded a project that I've worked on before for the coins, and I did five by five. I'm going to make it six by five to get 30 out of one sheet of basswood. So I've got two canvases here, the front and back. We're just going to start with a clean canvas. And go ahead and load your M1 tool with the basswood that you're going to use. And let's go ahead and define the material, three millimeter basswood, and I have it on the prisms for this side. Let's pull in our image. And you'll notice that there's a little something right there that I mentioned before. Let's get rid of that. Click the image, go to edit image, click the erase button, and just come down and click on that, and now it's gone. Save. And that's it. Now let's tell the laser what we want to do with this. We want it to engrave, so that's good. The next thing we want to do is create an outline. And I just accept the, the numbers that they have here. Now we have an outline around the thing. And I want to tell the tool to cut that out of the wood. So that's set to cut. Now at the same time, we want to move that to another layer. And that will become obvious why in a few minutes. The next thing we want to do is select both of these and group them because we're done making changes to the image. We just want it to behave as one, one object. Now we want to make six copies of this across and I just use Control C and Control V or you can right click and do copy and paste but I'm going to use the keyboard shortcuts copy and then paste Okay, let's do another, uh, just another uh, paste, paste, paste. There we go. Now we have six. Now select all these images and do align bottom. Now we want to do the spacing. We want them just as close as we can get them without overlaying the cut line. So that's pretty close. So let's move him over a little bit. That's good. And that's pretty close. That one's pretty close. This one that's good. And then last. Alright. It's looking good. Now select all of these guys and let's group them together. Now we can move the whole line treat the whole line as one object. So just roughly center it, go to array, grid array, make X column one and click on the plus until you get five rows. Click OK. Now we're done. That's it for the front side of the token. Now we want to click layer two and you'll see why in just a moment. Do control C to copy Go to a new canvas, just click on the canvas, do control V. Now we have an outline of the token so that we can put text on the back. But because we're doing this on the back, we need to also click reflect and reflect horizontally. Now, this is the way the back will be in the laser when we engrave these guys. Now it'll make things easier if we just select all these fellows and group them together now that they're all one solid object. Now I'm going to go to another canvas where I worked on the project previously, select my text, Control C to copy, come back to this canvas and do a paste. And so we just want to paste five more times to get five copies, six copies actually in total. Now we just click on each one individually and move it where we want. Use the arrow keys, the up and down arrow keys.
The next step is we want to hold the shift key down and select each text object. Be careful, don't click the outline. Get all six. Now we want to group those. Now we can click on the text object, do a control C, control V, and now we have another whole row of text. And we'll line it up in just a moment. Let's get all of our copies down here. Just keep doing control V or right click and paste. Now click on the text object and use the arrow keys to fine tune the placement so that every token looks okay. Uh, that one looks good. Yeah, that looks good. Let's do this one. All right, we're done. Now I did not go through how I created the text. You can do whatever you want. Just note that the text, everything in the text, uh, even the YouTube logo, is set to engrave. Now it's time to save our project. Now go back to these guys. Uh, make sure I've got the correct settings here. And I'm aligned on the plywood. It looks good. So let's start cutting and engraving. All right, the X tool just finished. Let's take a look at what we've got. Nice. Nice. <laughs> now to do the back. Okay, well, let me do it one more time. You're not supposed to say anything. <laughs> Shh, be quiet, Matt. <laughs> just a minute. Be quiet. Shh. <laughs> <Next>. <laughs> I'm trying to do a video. All right, 30 tokens. Now we have to engrave the back. But the front is looking good. So let me show you how we do the back. To do the back side, we're going to take the prisms out and lay the wood flat on the bottom surface. This is the way I removed it. But since we're doing the back, we want to flip that over and place it back inside the tool. And I find that it helps to put painter's tape all around the edges. Let me do that. The painter's tape does two things. It keeps the, the wood from sliding around as you put the tokens back in. And also, often when you've done this much cutting on a piece of wood and there's very little of the wood left, it'll tend to warp or bow, and the painter's tape holds it flat against the bottom. So now we're ready to do the back. Okay, we're back in the X Tool software, and this is the front of the tokens that we just cut. Now let's go to the other canvas for the back of the tokens. Refresh the image from the laser. Select the material, which is three millimeter basswood. Let's go ahead and select everything and group everything as one object so we can move everything together and use our mouse and get things pretty close with the mouse. That actually looks pretty close. So now the, the orange lines will be a cut line but our tokens are already cut so we need to get rid of the cut line. Now here's where using layers really comes in handy. Select layer one, which is orange for the cut lines, and when you select layer one, it selects all the lines and just hit delete. And now those cut lines are gone. Now what we have left is the text that we will engrave on our tokens. And now we can ungroup everything and we can make individual adjustments. This one needs to go down just a little bit. Uh, 
that one needs to go down just a little bit to fit so that looks good and this text is already set to engrave so we're good to go there just making a few minor adjustments just double check again basswood yep yeah. and these are set to engrave and I leave everything at the default Here's how it looks after engraving the, the back side. Very nice. Hopefully you learned something in this video. If you've done something similar, share in the comments below. And if you see me and Sylvia the Goldwing on the Oregon Trail in the next month or two, stop, have a chat, and I'll give you a token.